Hi, I'm Shustin Jane and welcome back to my channel where I'm doing Vlogmas and it's day seven today. So welcome to day seven of Vlogmas. And today I thought I'd had, well, I've been thinking a little bit about entertaining and food and what we're going to do. I've got just a tiny Christmas day, just me and Justin and the girls for breakfast and then they're going off. Boxing day, I've got 18 of my family coming. So I've been thinking about what I'm going to do for that. And obviously I don't want to spend ridiculous amounts of money. And I think it's really, it's kind of easy to get very tied up at Christmas and think you have to spend a fortune and do the best of everything and spend all of your time slaving over a, a cooker and, you know, get very stressed about it all. Stressed about the time, stressed about the money. And I have done that in the past. There's literally no doubt that I've done that in the past. And it's quite hard work when you're doing a buffet for lots of people or doing a meal for lots of people. But there are ways to kind of lighten the load a little bit. So what I tend to do is I'll ask the family to bring the desserts. So everybody wants to bring a contribution anyway. So they'll bring a dessert. So they normally tell me what they're going to bring. So they want to say to make sure that they're not bringing a cheesecake when somebody else is bringing a cheesecake or something like that. So they'll also bring some drinks. So soft drinks if they're driving or maybe some alcoholic drinks if they fancy a glass or two. And I will buy also some soft drinks and I'll buy some wine and stuff and some Prosecco. But I'm going to keep it really simple. I was thinking about, what oh, shall I do this buffet dish and that buffet dish? And then I thought, do you know what? It's so much easier with my small kitchen to feed a crowd, when there's a crowd milling as well, to feed a crowd on something like a big pot of chilli con carne. So I'm going to do a big chilli con carne, some rice, I'm going to do a macaroni cheese as well for the vegetarians in the family um, and then some bread and some salads um, and then perhaps I'll have a few little picky bits in case they hang around towards tea time so things that can come out um, to go alongside the leftover salads so we could have some cheeses, a cheese board, um, I don't know what else really, Let's maybe some, I don't know, marinated chicken wings or something cheap like that. So that's what I have in mind and I don't think that will be hideously expensive and hopefully won't stress me out too much either. And my other Christmas gathering is with my book group and we're going to have a potluck supper so we're each taking a dish and we really is pot, it totally is potluck, we're not, we haven't kind of controlled it at all so we could end up with about 10 desserts, who knows, but we decided just to have a bit of fun with it. And I'll have a little bit of something before I go, just in case there's just all desserts. So I've had something savoury. But I'm going to make a, I thought it was something nice and easy. I'll get some ready-made puff pastry and I'll do a potato, cheese and onion filling for it. Because that's actually nice warm, but it's equally nice cold. And it's vegetarian. If there's somebody there who's vegetarian, I'm not sure about everybody's eating habits because we don't eat together. We just chat and have a few glasses of wine and talk about books so um, that's another thing it's not too expensive because I'm buying ready-made puff pastry it won't be a big time problem as well for me I won't I'm gonna I'm busy all week so I don't want to be kind of stressing out trying to get food together for my potluck supper and we'll, we'll each take a bottle as well so again you know the hostess doesn't have to take all the strain the burden of doing the food and doing all the drink and then if we all take our own dishes, we can just take them home and wash them up as well. I asked about this topic recently on my Facebook group, My Secondhand and Frugal Life, just to see what people were doing for Christmas dinner and whether, you know, what their suggestions would be for a buffet that wasn't too sort of time consuming and expensive. And they came up with quite a few ideas. So I thought I'd share a few of them with you. So lots of people not having traditional turkey for the actual Christmas dinner. Helen says she made a chicken, chestnut and shallot casserole, which is now in the freezer. And she, and she bought a yellow label veggie haggis, which is also in the freezer for vegetarians. For buffet, she suggests jacket potatoes and various fillings. I've done that before and that's gone down really well because it's just easy, you know, you can do baked beans, tuna, mayo, cheese, coleslaw, those kind of things and um, just do a whole load of baked potatoes and everyone can tuck in and help themselves with some salads and things. Um, a lot of people have cold meats. Carla says she has cold meats, potato salad, nice salad, picky bits, quiche, Indian bites, little mini pizzas, pickles, and that kind of thing. Susie 
uses a lot of leftovers from Christmas Day. There's always too many mince pies, chocolate or cheese. So everyone brings their leftovers and their buffet can be quite interesting. Um, think a mix of English, Indian, Chinese and Italian. I think that'd be quite nice. Just everybody bring a little bit of something and all their leftovers. Um, she suggests little egg muffins work well. They're cheap and easy. And small French bread pizzas you can make yourself as well work well. So yeah, that's true. You could do a range of pizza toppings, can't you, quite easily. Heather says her mum used to make nice little tartlets by buttering cheap white bread that she'd flattened with the rolling pin cutting out circles and pressing into buntings and baking until crispy. My mum did that. It must have been a 70s or 80s thing. And actually, that it's much quicker than making pastry. Um, and it, it goes nice and crispy, and then you can fill them with anything, really. So that's a good idea. Um, you can put things like sort of creamy mushrooms and prawn cocktail on bits of bacon and cheese, that kind of thing. Somebody else says, huge chilli in jacket potatoes or rice. It's warming in this freezing weather. That's true. Or a huge pile of bread rolls and plates of sausages, bacon, fried onions and a veggie option. Actually, that's that's a really good idea. You can do pulled pork as well, couldn't you? So just make a load of bacon and sausages and some nice crusty bread and let people pile in and help themselves. When you've been eating just bits and pieces all the time, that can just be a good option. I think that's I quite like that. Some people have a massive breakfast and then a three o'clock buffet rather than a sit down meal. So Anne says breakfast, we have soto potatoes and at three o'clock a big buffet with lots of picky bits and things the children like. That's good if you've got picky eaters, isn't it? Or if you're just kind of grazing all day, then do you actually need the big meal? Although to be fair, I think for me, if I didn't have a proper Christmas dinner, I'd somehow feel like I'd missed out. It's just too much of a tradition for me. But, you know, I'm all for everybody doing their own thing, actually. Um, Lisa's making caprice salad. I don't know what caprice salad is. Potato salad. A big Spanish omelette cut into squares or triangles. That's a really good idea because you can make that in advance as well. Uh, carved Christmas ham. Small chocolate pots. Small trifles. Cheese board with chutneys. Old fashioned fruit salad. Oh, my lot love a fruit salad. Somebody's going out for a curry. <laughs> Sue says you've got to have volivants. Egg, prawn and chicken in white sauce. Not together though. <laughs> it's true. Fiona's daughter's coming back from France and she asked her if she wanted a Christmas dinner and she said, no, I want a fish and chip supper. I think if you've been abroad, that's the kind of thing you crave, isn't it? Lots of people having the roast. Um, so lots of people suggesting lasagnas. I find lasagnas just so fiddly to make so fiddly to make. I think chilli would be easier, although I do quite like eating lasagna. Someone says a nice ribeye with lots of garlic butter. I think that's for Christmas dinner, not for a buffet. That would be hideously expensive. Spanish tapas, good for a buffet. Yeah, I'd quite like that. Jennifer says when she had a large party of 20, she did a sh shoulder of pork in the slow cooker and at the end made a barbecue sauce and shredded it into the pulled pork. Mm, I said pulled pork, didn't I? That sounds delicious. Served with buns, homemade coleslaw and homemade potato salad. That actually sounds really nice and not too complicated. You can shove it in the slow cooker. That sounds good. Carla's making venison vegetable soup. She'd rather have that than ham or turkey. And that's the thing, Christmas. Have what you want. Have what you enjoy. And Pip says... We just lays around with picky bits all day. The two of us don't bother with dinner. Neither of us wants to cook and we don't eat traditional Christmas food, really. So just a day of rest with extra booze and treats. Again, you know, if it works for you, that's fine. So lots of good ideas for different buffet things and different Christmas Day fare from my Facebook group. So before I forget, I've got to do my Advent of Change calendar. So we're on day seven today. And day seven supports Willow. And Willow says, today you have helped send a box full of special treats to a hospice, brightening the day of a young adult receiving palliative care. Gosh, how hard that must be, especially at Christmas. That's a good one. Mustn't forget to do this every day. Anyway, I'm going to move to the other room now because it's really cold in my office for some reason. I've been kicked out of downstairs again. My daughter's here for the last day before her internet comes in tomorrow. Hurrah! And I've got some 
things hanging there. Um, that is the Aran cardigan that I bought. And I really like it, it's really warm. But I can't decide if it suits me or not. I'm gonna go model it for Becky and see if she likes it on me. So back in the bedroom, it's a bit warmer in here and I've put a cozy cardigan on as well. So um, on the, still on the subject of Christmas socialising, but not necessarily hosting, I wrote an article recently to go in Mouthy Money. And if you have, if you have never read Mouthy Money website, go give it a visit. It's really interesting. It's full of all things money. And I write a couple of articles a month for them. And this one was about socialising on a budget because I used to feel that kind of pressure that I'd get involved in lots of kind of social things at Christmas. Um, and it was nice. People would invite you out, invite you to go to things, or there would be kind of an expectation that you would host various things. And I, being on a tight budget, would get quite stressed about it. And um, particularly the Christmas meals at the office, you know, so many Christmas meals you expected and Christmas drinks and I tried to go to them all and in the end I started to kind of cherry pick them because that was kind of a better way of doing it. And the way I looked at it was, you know, I didn't have to do everything and, you know, I might have had lots of clashing things. I didn't have to go on everything. I didn't have that kind of FOMO type thing, which I would have had when I was younger, where I thought I have to be at everything. Um, it was just became a bit of a stress, which you just don't want at Christmas or any time, do you? So when I was writing the article, I was thinking from that kind of point of view of how I used to feel. And there are a few things that came up in the article, so I'll just go through them. So the first one was to work out your budget for socialising in advance. If you're doing a regular budget anyway, you could perhaps give yourself a slightly bigger entertaining allowance for December and January because, you know, you probably do want to go and do some things and socialise. And being frugal is not about missing out on things. It's about kind of having control of your money and knowing that you can afford it. So you could set a budget and make sure you've perhaps put a bit more money aside in advance so that if you do want to go to lots of social occasions that you can. So working out what your budget is and don't overspend your budget, that's the, the, the crucial thing. And then decide what your priorities are. So it's like what I was saying just now about cherry picking, you know, I didn't need to go to everything. Decide what do you really want to go to? What are the important things? Do you really, really want to take your kids to the pantomime? And that's quite expensive in itself. Um, and if that's what you want to do and then you're getting involved in lots of other things and invited to lots of other things that people are saying, we're all going out to dinner at the Carvery or whatever, you can say, oh, actually, no, I don't want to do that because we're going to go do the pantomime. And you don't have to do everything and decide what your priorities are. And I think once you're kind of focused on what your priorities are, then it's much easier to politely decline and say no to, to other things. So that's what I would do. And the other thing is if you're going out and you're going perhaps to the pub or to, to a bar or something like that, is to take cash with you. So, I mean, I know it's a bit nerve wracking going out without a card, but you can always have your card hidden away somewhere, but pay for everything by cash. And then you can see the money slipping through your fingers. And that's the amount you've got allotted for that evening. And once it's gone, it's time to go home. So <laughs> that's the other thing you can do take cash. Don't forget to save some cash for your taxi home or your bus home. It's much better to do that than to kind of blindly spend, just keep thinking, or oh, just one more round of drinks. And then you find a massive hole in your bank account the next day that makes you anxious. The other thing is, um, this applies particularly when you're meeting friends for dinner, is to be upfront about you know, what you can afford and what your situation is. And it is a cost of living crisis. Other people may also be on a quite a tight budget. So you might say, you know, if we're going to have dinner, I'm, I'm not going to have a starter and I'm not going to have a dessert. So is it OK if we just pay for what we have? And, you know, I've had friends do that before and it, it's fine. It didn't make me think they were a skin flint or anything like that. It just made me think they were living within their means. So I think that's fine. Or, you know, just in advance, are we going to split it equally? Or are we all going to pay for what we've actually eaten? And the other thing is, if you tend to have rounds of drinks, is rather than the first person end up with a massive round, an expensive round of drinks, right at the beginning, say, why don't we have a whip? And everybody put whatever you think is appropriate in the whip. Drinks are quite expensive in the UK, but perhaps everything, everybody could put 20 quid in the whip. And you might think, well, 
30 quid is my, my limit. That's all I'm going to be putting in the whip tonight or 20 pounds is my limit. So once that's gone and you've all had your drinks, that's gone. Only really works if everybody's drinking. If you're the designated driver, then you might want to just stick to your soft drinks or maybe everybody could treat you to your soft drinks if you're driving them about. So it might feel awkward to discuss it to start with, but actually you might find that your friends are quite relieved and there's a, a sense of relief around the table when you talk about it so that people know what to expect. And the other thing about socialising on a budget is when you start to look, there are quite a few free things that you can do. So, you know, in my vlog the other night, I showed you the Christmas lights nearby. They weren't that spectacular. But, you know, there's always a, a light switch on in the town or the village where you live or the city, or there's lights that are worth going to see at the shops if you live in a big city. You could go around and do all the Christmas houses in your area, do a little tour of them. You could do that with friends or just with your family and then come home and have, you know, nice hot chocolate with marshmallows or something. And kids love that. My kids used to love it. We'd go and search out the Christmas houses, do a little tour of them and then come home and play games or, you know, have some treats and that kind of thing. And there are free carol concerts. Um, there are church services. Um, and even if you're not religious, sometimes it's quite nice to remember what Christmas is actually about. Um, maybe pop along to a church service every now and then. We always used to take the girls to the Christmas Eve carols for kids. And, you know, we weren't, we're not particularly religious, but I wanted them to not be intimidated by the inside of a church because, you know, it may be that they chose to adopt a Christian lifestyle later and I didn't want them to feel that they couldn't or they might have decided to be Buddhist or whatever. It's up to them. I really wouldn't have minded. Oh, hello, Archie. You come to join me. Come on in. Archie's coming. Oh. <laughs> Are you helping? You're going to sit on my advent calendar now. Good boy. Um, and the other thing you can do is like my book group. We're doing a potluck supper. So you could do that with friends. Then one person doesn't have to bear the cost of everything. And there are always amateur pantomimes. They're much cheaper than the really expensive professional ones and often really good fun. And if your children are in them, even better. But, you know, it may be that you just find a, lo a local panto and that's quite fun to go to. Um, and the other thing would be just, just taking advantage of your art galleries and museums. It's always good when you've got help, isn't it? And uh, I mean, out in the UK, uh, a lot of our art galleries and museums are free anyway, but quite often they'll have a seasonal display on. So it's quite nice to go along to those. And our castle, we have a castle, our castle. We have a castle in the town and they have a free open day every year. So when I, my kids were small, I always used to make a note of that date, and take them along. And then you could pay like three pounds or four pounds and go along and visit Santa as well and have get a little present, which was really quite inexpensive. And there's also that pressure to buy new clothes and look a certain way. You can see I've got a dress here. I actually bought this dress. I know it's very colourful, but I bought it for my dad's funeral because it was in his colours of his football team. It's claret and blue. I'm going to wear that again to my Christmas party when I go to the book group. Um, just put some thick tights under it and make sure I've got a, a top underneath it so it's not too cold. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm going to wear what I've got already. So I could have gone out and bought something new, but I've got stuff that I don't wear very often at party type things. And if I didn't, you know, I'd be looking on Vinted, be looking secondhand on eBay, be looking at pre-loved, if you've got a pre-loved site, that's quite a good site, quite inexpensive. So, you know, you don't have to buy something brand new to you. It could be new to you, but not brand new. Um, so, you know, try and resist the pressure to feel like you have to really buy lots of expensive clothing by second hand. And you can also do a bit of DIY glam. I love taking my nails done, as you know, but you know, I'm not doing that for Christmas. I've got some sparkly nail varnish they need doing again. Um, I might get some gold nail varnish. I don't know, we'll see, but I'm not gonna spend a lot. Um, this morning I have done my own roots and cut my own fringe. So I just have to straighten my hair to go out, put a bit of makeup on, do my own glam. If I'm, I mean, I'm not exactly glamorous, you know, but you know, you can do your own glam, you can do your own hair, you can look on YouTube and see what people suggest for makeup tutorials and do your hair, hair tutorials, how to put your hair up and that kind of thing. You don't have to go and spend a fortune at the salon and there is that pressure. So take a breath and step away from that. So it sounds like a cliche, 
but the fact is that just spending time with the people that you want to spend time with, with your family and your friends is the really important things and from your children's point of view those are the memories that they will treasure so it's not all about the biggest toy and the going to the most expensive show and that kind of thing you know it's lovely to do if you can afford it but if you can't there's so many alternatives anyways that's day seven done if you enjoyed this don't forget to give me the thumbs up and to subscribe and from me and from wretched archie it's goodbye for now. The next time you see Archie, he will be all shorn, have a lovely Christmas haircut because he's going to the groomers a bit later. Anyway, bye for now. See you tomorrow.